This episode of the Old Dogs REI Network is brought to you by Mino Studio. Mino Studio is a pre- and post-production facility for all of your audio needs. Mino Studio's founder is an accredited audio engineer with top 40 and indie album credits. With over 30 years of music industry experience, Mino Studio can take your podcast from idea to reality. Contact Mino Studio at Mino Studio 777 at gmail.com for more information. That's Mino Studio 777 at gmail.com. In a world where jobs are how most people make money, one man, one desire, one challenge. Dares to break the mold. Welcome to the Old Dogs REI Network, where we don't work for money. Money works for us. Coming soon. Your discretion advised. Welcome to the Old Dogs REI Network, where cash flow is king. Real estate investing, the means, so you can enjoy your retirement dreams. This is the show where we cut right to the chase. No sales pitch, no long monologues, just simple how-to real estate investing advice, so you can earn the passive income you need to enjoy your retirement today. And now, your host and chief old dog, Bill Manacero. Welcome to the Old Dogs REI Network. I'm your host, Bill Manacero, and this is the show where 50 plusers and anyone else who wants to join us get solid, no sales pitch real estate investing advice to help generate real cash flow. This is a twice weekly podcast, and if you aren't already a subscriber, go to iTunes and subscribe. It's great. First thing in the morning, Monday morning, or first thing in the morning, Friday morning, your podcast is already there on your phone, on your iPad or computer, ready to go. It's real convenient to subscribe, so we'd love if you did it. Thanks a lot. And without further ado, let's join our guest, Susan Lassiter Lyons. Well, I want to look at some general ideas here, looking at your real estate investing background. And if you wouldn't mind sharing... Maybe your sort of your worst deal, worst situation or mistake that maybe you learned from, um, and then I also want to conversely look at uh, you know one of your biggest successes. Mm, great question. Um, so, you know, it would be easy to say that that tax lien deal was my worst deal, but it really wasn't. The worst deal was really that triplex mm. um, that I uh, uh, that we we did a deed in lieu of foreclosure with the bank on. I made every single mistake you can make on that property, starting with um, I overpaid for it. I got kind of caught up in the irrational exuberance of the market. Um, and subsequently, I didn't really uh, have enough money in the budget to do the type of rehab on it that really needed to be done. So I did a really crappy job of rehabbing, which I managed myself, which was just a compounded mistake because I am not a construction manager by any stretch of anyone's imagination. Um, I was desperate to get tenants in there and made very poor decisions on the people that we put into that property. I think every mistake that I could have possibly made on a property, I absolutely made on that deal. And, you know, in hindsight, I consider myself lucky that I just escaped with a deed in lieu of foreclosure as opposed to just a straight up foreclosure blemishing my record because, um, I deserved it. You know, I made all the mistakes that, um, that, um, I teach people not to make now. And, um, it's easy to look back, you know, with 2020 hindsight and, uh, recognize the mistakes. It was very difficult when I was in it because, you know, I just thought, Hey, the bubble's never going to pop. Um, you know, I just know the portfolio is going to keep growing and growing. I just need to slap tenants in there. As long as it's cash flowing, everything's fine. And, um, the bottom line is that uh, I just I made a lot of mistakes with that one. So I'd say that was probably my biggest failure of um, 
of my portfolio. Um, let's see the biggest success, the biggest success. I would say there's an apartment building. It's a, a complex that um, I'm part of the ownership syndicate on and it's in Stone Mountain, Georgia. Mm-hmm. And it's, it was a successful purchase for us because it met all of our uh, criteria. Um, you know, it's a 300 unit uh, property. Um, uh, you know, it's a, a, a B class asset. Um, cash flows, you know, I structured it so that I have a piece of the cash flow and the equity, which was um, a step up from some of the earlier syndicates that I'd put together where I just did it for a piece of the equity. So I didn't actually have monthly income coming in and that was a mistake. Mm. So all of the, the, you know, the structure of the deal was perfect and it continues to be perfect. And I am very proud of that investment. But for me, what makes it the most successful investment is because I grew up in Stone Mountain, Georgia, as a kid living in an apartment complex, not too far from that one. <laughs> really? Wow. Yeah. Wow. And so there's like this emotional piece to it for me, that when the opportunity came for this property, and it, you know, kind of landed in my lap. And I was like, you've got to be kidding me. I'm going from being like the poor kid growing up in an apartment complex in Stone Mountain, Georgia, now to owning, owning a 300 unit apartment complex in Stone Mountain, Georgia. And so it kind of felt like I'd come full circle and it was, it was, and continues to be very meaningful to me on an emotional level. Wow. The irony of that, huh? Yeah. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Neat. Um, well, looking at your business as a whole, and, and I think your business, the way I see it, it looks like multiple businesses, but uh, it is, yeah. <laughs> um, what is your long-term goal here? Um, you obviously are very successful already and yeah. um, in, in a lot of different areas, but do you have sort of an end game in mind or, or where you want to get to as you sort of you know approach, I don't think you're a long ways from retirement, but as you approach sort of those years when you might want to just uh, take it easy and, and relax a little bit, where do you see your business going in five, 10 years down the road? Sure. You know, I'll be 51 this year and I've given that specific question an awful lot of thought. Um, early in my career, I set a monetary goal for myself. I, you know, basically said that, um, I want to, you know, I want to be able to make a million dollars a year. Um, and then, you know, you, I, I hit that. I did like 1.5 million in revenue in, um, 2013 Mm -hmm. and it was exciting and I felt very successful, but then I also felt very tired (laughs) 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 And, and was like, Okay, so I hit that goal, like this, you know, the the arbitrary $1 million goal that my 10-year-old self set for me back in the day. Um, and when I sat down to think of the next thing, you know, it, it felt really easy just to say, okay, I'm going to set another arbitrary revenue goal. And, you know, I decided at that point that I wanted to grow my business to $5 million in revenue a year. Um and that made me feel tired, more tired just thinking about it. And <laughs> right. I, I couldn't really rally around that goal. And I couldn't, you know, I found myself for the first time in a long time being kind of lazy and blowing stuff off and, you know, not being the usual kind of hard charging person that I am. And when I really examined it, I figured it was because, you know, it was just an arbitrary goal. So I took a step back and I thought, you know, let me design the kind of life that I want. And then let me figure out how the business or businesses can support that. Mm -hmm. And so I have this whole concept now that I call one life. And, you know, people talk an awful lot about like balance, finding balance between work and personal life. And I just realized that, you know, I don't want to have this separation between my work and my life. I want it all just to be my life. And I don't want to work more than 25 or 30 hours a week. And, um, I want to make sure that not only, you know, the, the passive income that my business generates far exceeds my living expenses, but also allows me to, you know, 
put a whole bunch of money into my retirement account and it allows me to have a really great lifestyle in terms of travel and, you know, doing the things that I enjoy and having the nice things that I want to have. So I kind of backed off of that $5 million goal. My goal now, um, and one that, you know, I've just been kind of tooling along for the last couple of years, we, I do $800,000 in revenue. Um, across my businesses, my margins are extremely high. So my net is, you know, very, very high. Um, and I'm able to enjoy my lifestyle and work about 25 or 30 hours a week. Now, in terms of, you know, moving into retirement, if there really is such a thing as that, mm-hmm. um, it really is going to be more about, uh, net worth and legacy, So, um, you know, I want to have a business that I can turn over to, you know, my nephews and nieces. I don't have any children of my own, but I have a couple of nephews that I'm very, very close to. One of them has worked with me in the business before, and um, now he's in his second year of law school. So there might come a time when he'll come back. And uh, my other nephew is 12 right now. And, you know, he thinks it's real exciting to do some of the fun stuff in Aunt Susan's office. So, you know, there may be an opportunity for him as well. So for me, it's more about um, making sure that I have enough to be comfortable, that I have enough to, you know, flow some cash into my retirement account. um, And so that I have a net worth that is going to be worthy, you know, of a, a sustaining legacy for my family. Mm, that's great. Yeah, I, I read a book. Uh, gosh, I, I wish I could remember the name of the title of it, but it was, it was kind of a similar idea where you were supposed to. Part of the exercise of this book was to look at um, what is your perfect day. What yeah, does it look I like? like that. And yeah. you just paint that day from the moment you wake up till the moment you go to sleep, and and you say, okay, what do I have to do to make that day a reality? And one of the, the little things that this book talked about is that he has like a little whiteboard in front of his desk. And what he does is he calculates based on his age and, and various factors. What is the average length of time a person would live, a, a male living in, you know, in uh, upstate New York or whatever it is. And, uh, and then he, he literally has a little clock uh, like uh, that he it, he each day he changes it says basically i have you know 6583 days to live wow. <laughs> and uh, yeah i know it's like <laughs> oh, man <laughs> and uh, and he just looks at that each day and he goes you know it's kind of like the the concept of living each day like tomorrow you won't be here and um right. and and really trying to you know put in your head hey i want to make the most out of these every day i have so often we're working so hard toward a goal, we kind of miss, you know, the yeah. today. And uh, and I really like that. I like what you said that uh, there there really is a looking at where you want to be, and and not so much let the money be the driving force, but but your right. you know, your 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 life and the way you're living your life. And uh, yeah. so I, I I think that's that's something that a lot of people can take to heart. Well, if you could explain that to my accountant, that would be great. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he right. has some concerns. <laughs> and any investors that you might have, right? Yeah. He's like, why are you, why, what's happening? He's like, why are you deliberately <laughs> going backwards? I'm like, look, you know, it's, I don't want to be, you know, 65 years old, 70 years old, having to, you know, hustle real estate. I don't want to have to work 40 hours a week, 60 hours a week. I, I want to enjoy my life. And, um, if 800,000 is the number that I've settled on and that's the number that's good for me, then that's the number that should be darn well acceptable to my accountant. So, yeah, uh, yeah. It's just uh, let him keep his nose in QuickBooks and uh... yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> you know, we just um, I, before you know the show started, you and I were chatting, and um, I mentioned that uh, I just got back last night from a quick trip down to Scottsdale, Arizona, um, and I I rarely travel for business anymore, but this was a conference that I wanted to go to. But I was like, hey, you know, we're going to do some R and R too, so you know, took the whole family, um, got to spend some really great time at a a nice resort down there, the Camelback Inn that I'd always heard a lot about and never had an opportunity to stay and um, just really soaked up and enjoyed the experience and uh, spent time, you know, in a pool cabana and got some spa treatments and, you know, so the, the business was great, but 
honestly, the, uh, you know, the relaxation was even better and just being able to kind of cross that one off the bucket list and say, yep, went there, enjoyed the heck out of it. And now let's look on to the next adventure. That's what's most important to me. And, yeah. you know, I was talking to a friend of mine about that experience and I, you know, and about growing our businesses. And I said, you know, if, if, if I were, if I were back in my thirties again, right. And starting over, um, it would probably be different. You know, I, I think that I would be uh, more hard charging. I'd probably have a much higher revenue goal and, you know, be um, doing what I needed to do in order to achieve that. But, you know, looking back now at 51, it's like I'm, I'm comfortable. Um, my net worth is such that if I decided today that, you know, I didn't want to work anymore, I probably could make that happen, you know, with some careful budgeting uh, and be able to have a comfortable rest of my life. Um, but I just, I, I'm at the point in my life and I'm sure it's the same point where a lot of your listeners are, you know, we just, we're not those hard charging 30 years olds anymore, right? right? We're in our fifties, we're in our sixties, seventies, whatever. And I want to enjoy my life. Um, and I fundamentally want to be able to have the freedom to do whatever I want, whenever I want, wherever I want. Mm -hmm. And, um, I'm very fortunate that I have created a business that allows me to do that. That's great. And, and I love that. I, I think that that's anybody that's, that's going to pursue real estate investing. I think that's one of the things that uh, people have to look at. I have that same feeling. I'm 60 and I kind of look at things like, well, I've been there and I've done that, <laughs> you know, right. I've been yeah. in corporate America. I've started businesses. I've done all these things and, and it's great. And, but you know, there's something to be said too for quality of life. And when I look at that perfect day, for example, um, you know, there, there's not too many seminars in there that I'd be going to, right. <laughs> that wouldn't be part of my perfect day or right? uh, no, not mine either. <laughs> or getting now, on the phone perfect, and pitching now, somebody. You know? Now, perfect day, like maybe a little couple hours of seminar in the morning and then pool time at the cabana and then a massage in the spot at the camelback in okay that, that that's works. a yeah. nice version of the perfect day <laughs> yeah, right squeezing in a little bit of business <laughs> yeah i mean there's something to be said too to keep the mind active and that's what that's what i love about it for me is you know as you know when i'm looking at deals and i'm and i'm scouting you know emerging markets or whatever you know it's fun it's fun because i'm i'm using my mind and i'm not you know just sitting around collecting seashells you know right <laughs> <laughs> the beach, you know. I'm, Although, Bill, you'd be darn good at that. <laughs> Sell yourself short. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the sad part about it. It's true. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, but you know, I think that that's that's something that's really fun about it too. Is you, you know, you can enjoy learning new things. You know, and at the yeah. same time, you you know, you gotta have that time where you enjoy too. The the people that mean things to, in your life and, and the places that you've always wanted to go and, and, right. and, and on and on, you know, I think, uh, I think there's a balance there, but I, I, I do really like, and, and want to hear more about, um, you know, just, a, a you know, maybe in another, in another interview, if uh, <laughs> you would grace us, but, sure. uh, you know, about the automation, uh, you know, I know there's a lot oh, of folks yeah. doing, you know, virtual assistance and so forth. You know, I get caught up in the minutia so often and I go, yeah. gosh, is this something that I could give to somebody else and so that I can focus on what I'm really good at. Those are the, uh, the things that to me make a lot of sense and make it fun what you're doing. You're doing what you really do well and you enjoy doing. So Exactly. Yeah. And just get rid of the rest. You know, I know um, earlier you um, asked if I might like share a resource, you know, that I kind of turned to for uh, automation and I can just share a really quick one, a place sure. where I go a lot. It's a website called Fiverr. Oh, same here. I love right? Fiverr. Right? Is Fiverr the best thing ever? I, I love Fiverr. They've like redesigned my life. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, for yeah. five bucks, you know? Right? You can, yeah. well, 550 Yeah. The fee. Let's That's be true. real. That's true. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they but should call uh, it 550 or. You know. Yeah, 550 or for sure. But no, Fiverr, you know, has just been um, fantastic for me for like these projects on demand where, you know, I have. Uh, uh, this, I have a whiteboard in my office. I'm looking at it right now. And up across the top, I keep written, is this a revenue producing activity or a distraction? And it's just a general reminder to me to, you know, Hey, Susan, if you're struggling with creating a spreadsheet, quit struggling, creating a stupid spreadsheet. That's not the highest and best use of your time. 
you know, I have a guy on Fiverr named Brian who I will create any beautiful spreadsheet I want for $5.50. And, uh, you know, you have a video editors there, you have writers there if you need to create content. Um, you know, if I need numbers crunched or if I need, you know, a, a business model tweaked or some anything, I mean, seriously, Social there, media, there are some SEO, very, I mean, everything, very yeah. talented yeah. people on Fiverr. Yeah. Right. Right. And if you want to get your logo burned onto toast, you can get that too. Oh I, man, I missed that one. <laughs> I got that one. And so two hilarious things I bought on Fiverr. One was they're like, put your logo on toast. And I was like, oh my God, what a great idea. I and then I'm like, it. what the heck am I going to do with toast logo? You know? And <laughs> anyway, it was fun. But then the next thing I did, um, I have a friend, Lisa, who lives in New York city and, uh, for her birthday, I, uh, hired someone on Fiverr to dance to her favorite song for two minutes wearing a hot dog suit <laughs> and and they videoed it and i sent it to her <laughs> you sound like you're spending way too much time in five right, right now. Is, is <laughs> activity or distraction but, but i actually do that too you know they send the emails and they'll say you know here are the hot new gigs you know and stuff and i'll uh -huh. look at these and i'll go wow i never thought of that you know a, a, yeah. a dancing hot dog i could send somewhere you know yeah. <laughs> it was hilarious so that was that was five dollars and 50 cents very well spent oh i love it i, love it. <laughs> <laughs> I have just uh, one sort of last part of this we do our, our wrap up and i ask you real quick books and things like that that you recommend and so forth and then we kind of close out but what i will do is i'll just kind of ask you quickly and you respond as fast as you can on these sure ones. some of them are not real quick answers that's okay but uh, let's get started here favorite real estate book Favorite real estate book, um, kind of an ancillary real estate book because it was written by Gary Keller, but it's called The One Thing. Oh, I love that. That's, Me too. That's great. great. That's great. Well, that, that may fall into the next category, which is favorite business book. Favorite business book actually is Choose Yourself by James Altucher. Mm, great. Um, most valuable website for success, not counting your own, um, that uh, you go to uh, on a regular basis. Um, well, obviously Fiverr, right, is uh, has been a most valuable website for me. Um, I also really, really enjoy reading Tim Ferriss's blog. I think he has one of the best blogs uh, on the internet. And um, uh, there's another guy named James Clear at jamesclear.com that I read very regularly. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I also um, I'm, I'm on Tim's uh, list too, and he's he's got great great content and he's i like the way he hilarious. thinks hilarious yes yeah. yeah really good favorite app do you have an app on your phone that you can't live without an app on my phone that i can't live without um i would say well the one that i use the most that i couldn't live without is my scanner app it's called scanner pro oh i've got um, i've got a, i don't know if that's the same one i have or not but i love i have a scanner app on mine too it, oh, oh my god i don't know great. what i would do without and then you can it. send it as a pdf file wherever you want right uh, exactly and oh i love that yeah yep that's the best and then i like mint too you know to track some of the things that we've been talking about in terms of um, you know, I have all of my business uh, business accounts hooked up in there, as well as my personal ones. That I can just get a um, an on demand screenshot of my uh, my debt, my net worth at any given point. So it's nice to keep up with that too. That's great, Mint. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. um, and then the final question here: um, If you had to start all over, and mm -hmm. uh, knowing what you know and all you've got in your bank account is one thousand dollars what would you do mm. how would you spend it um i would i'd put together a multifamily syndication i mean this is you know this is what i know now so i would go out and raise capital to uh, uh from private investment partners to purchase a multifamily property and how would that 1000 be spent in that process? Um, I probably would have to spend a couple of hundred bucks on a phone bill. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, maybe a couple of hundred bucks on, um, you know, setting up, uh, uh, you know, some of the, the um, just, you know, basic legal structures like registering an LLC in Colorado and so forth. But it would just be a, a real minimal investment in terms of the tools that I needed for my own business in order to make that happen. 
And uh, now an SEC attorney is to be in there. You know, um, here's the cool thing about putting together syndicates is mm -hmm. that, you know, everything is completely um, reimbursable to the syndicate. So the capital that you raise, you also can um, utilize for the operational aspects of that business, the soft costs and the hard costs. So no, a thousand bucks. Oh, that's great. So that's anything to do. That's great. And, that's you know, perfect. I happen to have a very good friend, Kim. She's a real estate securities attorney. I may even be able to talk her into just coming on board as part of the syndicate and give us some and contribute her legal services as a capital contribution into the deal. I want friends like that. Wait a minute. Right? <laughs> That's She's a great, great friend. <laughs> That's great. Well, wow. This is um, this has been a great interview. I, I am so excited. There's so much excellent material here. Um, Thanks, Bill. I did forget to tell you there is one more thing, and you know, I, I, I usually send this <laughs> to you in advance, but I, I wasn't able to do this. Now we're called the Old Dogs REI Network, and. Um, Every guest that's been on the show, usually we close out with that guest giving us their best old hound dog howl. Oh, boy. There we go. <laughs> so it might not just be me, like if I start howling, because I have a beagle and a French bulldog that are just on the other side of my office door waiting for me to get off of this call. Oh, I but... love it. If they join in, that would be classic. <laughs> <laughs> All it. right. So our old dog, Aru. Ready? Here we go. Aru! How about that? Oh, I love it. Oh my gosh. My, I think my dog just uh, started howling with you a lot. Okay. <laughs> Seriously, I have a dog that does the same thing. Oh, that is so funny. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. That was great. That's going to go in our archives here as one of the best howls we've had. Uh, and now I understand why you don't warn people in advance. <laughs> <laughs> I might have suddenly been busy or had a yeah. conflict appointment when this She might have taken from. that uh, flight to Jamaica that she was postponing. <laughs> <laughs> oh great well well susan i can't thank you enough i i really um gosh i, I really appreciate uh, all the great great content uh i'm gonna definitely have a link to your your book that's gonna be on on our show notes but if folks wanted to get a hold of you what would be the best way to do that i'd say head over to the investor insights.com it's the InvestorInsights.com. And that's my main uh, real estate investing hub website. So you can uh, learn a, a little bit more about me, what we do, and the blog that I have up there. We, uh, we put a lot of time and effort in that blog to give really actionable advice uh, and information there. So that'd be the place. Oh, great. Excellent. Um, yeah. And I know that you have a number of fantastic resources as uh, I mean, the blogs themselves are, are yeah. extremely valuable, but uh, also, yeah. you know, coaching and a lot of other things that you do um, yeah. uh, in different programs. Uh, I think people will really enjoy it. So yeah, hopefully something for everybody. Uh, great. Well, Susan, thank you. I obviously went way over the time you had allocated. I hope I didn't throw off anything on your end too bad. No, we're cool. Absolutely uh, fine. I enjoyed every minute of it. Thank you so much for having me, Bill. Well, thank you. And let's uh, stay in contact. I'm sure we'll have you back and get a little bit more of your expertise online here. Sounds good. All right. Thank you so much. You bet. Take care. You too. <laughs>